I'm in again. I'm in and ready for the next fibro section. Bing, 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 bing. And this week it's going to be on how to cope during a flare up. That's just Evie walking in. So if you can hear noises, Evie's walking around. The dishwashers are <laughs> just normal, you know, life stuff. Anyway. So I'm going to talk to you a bit today on how to cope during a flare up. I have done some research, I have taken something out of the pain management course. So bear with me because I have got lots of notes. Because you know what fibro fog is like, we just forget. So I thought it's better for you if I write it all down and better for me to remember it and my phone's going off right first of all is be kind to yourself okay a flare-up is a horrible horrible thing and the more you beat yourself up about not being able to do stuff the worse it is I know this because I beat myself up regularly not physically but you know mentally about not being able to do what I think I should be doing so I am saying to you, don't do that because it's not nice and don't get upset, feel you've wasted a day, just see it as you're resting your body, which is what your body needs at the time, okay? So don't think, oh, all I've done today is watch a box set, all I've done today is read a book, all I've... because it's not a waste of a day it's letting your body recover so and you you've probably done something along there that you've enjoyed doing so we've said about recovering by resting but the other thing that's really important to remember is to keep moving every so often as well because it's very easy I know when you're having a flare-up to just either stay in bed or stay on the sofa and not get up and move because you don't want to because you feel so rough and so much pain but if you do move about and you do do some stretches just gentle stretches or just a gentle stroll around your garden or something then it does help the pain I promise you it does because it's worse if you stay in one place for too long that's really important so do something you enjoy doing, like watch a box set. What I'm going to do is put that up there so I don't keep looking down. Um, like watching a box set or a Netflix film, read a book, listen to a podcast, um, colouring in, adult colouring in. I, I love doing that. I still do that now. So just do something that you enjoy doing and don't feel guilty about it. So the pain management, when I went on the pain management course, what they said about flare-ups is to make up a flare-up plan. So plan what you need every time you have a flare-up, as in what medication you need, um, when you're going to rest. I mean, you're not going to know, I'm going to rest from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock. You're not going to know that, but like, just put in your plan that you're going to rest but you're also going to stretch. You're going to do some meditation maybe. And resources that you have to do. So like films, colouring, reading, podcast, music. Just making a plan. Mine is in my mind. I know exactly what I do at each flare up. So when I have a flare up, I go on the sofa. I get the duvet down because I love soft and being cosy um, and that's usually where I am but I do get up and down to do like something to stretch myself every so often um, and then I will either watch something from Netflix or um, a box set or um, I'll do some reading or I'll go on my laptop something to get me through it so that's my flare-up plan 
My medication I take, I take naproxen 500 milligrams on a flare up, but I try not to take it because it can cause stomach ulcers. So that's sort of the last desperate resort for me. But what I do do religiously on a flare up is take paracetamol extra every four hours because the extra is the caffeine and it kicks in the paracetamol making it work quicker and I've actually been told that by a GP and on the pain management course they also say how underestimated paracetamol is it's a brilliant brilliant painkiller and people just think it's oh that's not going to touch it that's just paracetamol but it's if you take it every four hours it might not take your pain away but it might take that horrible ill feeling away a little bit so I asked Twitter what they do in a flare up because most of my Twitter followers are fibro or chronic pain sufferers. Now the responses I got were rest, which we said, stay hydrated is really important. I'm going to go into that in a bit in a bit later. Um, do something you like to do that we've said. Someone said wear soft clothing, something that's not tight. That's quite important. Um, keep warm if it's cold so I have my duvet on or a blanket or something snuggly in um, have a warm bath if you can get in and out of it I struggle with getting in and out of the bath so I don't tend I tend to just have showers um, getting comfortable yeah getting in a comfortable position that can be quite tricky can't it when you're in that much pain you can't get comfortable and I find if I've been in a flare up by the time Mark gets home from work I'm like really fidgety because my bum hurts from sitting down and and that's when I have to sort of start trying to get up and move a bit that's why it's important to move every so often um, someone says stretch keep distracted so that's quite important keep distracted with doing the things that you like doing and take your med medication which I'll go into a bit more detail as well so it's difficult when you have a chronic illness and people don't understand it's difficult for them to know like I said in my family and friends one but what I do is I usually reach out to my Twitter followers because most of them know exactly what I'm going through so talking to people who understand does help and on Twitter I've just got so I've got about 500 people that all have chronic illness that will respond to me not all of them but you know I'll get a lot responding to me and helping me and encouraging me along it so that does help so the stay hydrated thing apparently drinking lots of water gets rid of toxins in the body so if you've got any toxins from your flare up the more water you drink the more you'll flush that through it also helps with fatigue and it helps medication to be absorbed all of those things you want to happen so my suggestion is just keep a bottle a big bottle of water by your side that's that's because the dishwasher's on the sinks making a funny noise um and then you can just keep sipping it throughout the day that's what i do i have a big bottle of water I've got to make mine actually and um, you can have like tea and stuff but it, do, it does say try and keep your caffeine intake low don't take, have fizzy drinks or juices or anything like that just try and keep it plain and simple really so take your medication like clockwork including paracetamol rather than waiting for the pain to return I'm a classic one for that like I, I mean I say with the par I take the paracetamol when I have a flare up but if, um, say with the naproxen and things like that, I will wait until my pain is really bad to take it. But by then it's just no good, is it? So maybe I should be taking it like clockwork, like it says, when I should be taking it during a flare up, not just waiting for the pain to strike. Um, so we've talked about moving, so stretching, simple yoga, there, there's a lot of uh, chair yogas, so you can do it just from where you're sitting, you don't even have to move, you know, you're just moving your arms and your legs about a bit. 
or a short walk or just moving just moving just move yourself stretch yourself out I am going to do a video on the stretches I do and I will do that fairly soon but I need someone in the family to record me doing it because I can't see what each shot looks like so I will get that done and remember to say no if you're on a flare you need to look after yourself and not promise to babysit or make a hundred cakes and you can say yes when your flare eases and you've just got to listen to your body that's really important listen to your body so if you want to flare up and someone says oh can you please babysit I need to do this I need to do that and you're like oh all right it's going to make you 10 times worse just say I can't I'm really sorry I can't do it because I'm not well at the moment and I need to recover before I can help you again and it's very hard to say no but you, you get used to it trust me <laughs> um, if you try to like I say and if you try to push through the pain you're going to just pay for it even more so ask for help from others extend deadlines for jobs you've got to do so say that I write a little list of jobs each day that I want to get done not always but most days and um, say I wanted to do some dusting or something so if I'm having a flare up I won't be doing the dusting that day I'll just put it on into another day you've got to be flexible keep your stress levels low that's really important stress is a major major factor in flare-ups so keep that low as possible and the ways you can do that meditation meditation is a brilliant one headspace I love on uh, my phone that's really good so a flare can be caused by all sorts and sometimes we don't even know why it's happened we can't pinpoint it we think well why have I had that and it can last from a day to weeks or months and we can't always avoid them but we can try to prevent them as best we can lack of sleep we can't always prevent that weather changes we've got no control over the weather travel stress treatment changes so when your medication changes when I had my um, I stopped taking gabapentin I was on a weak flare after that which is one of the longest ones I've had it was terrible um, injury or illness so if you've been ill like we call it muggle sick <laughs> being muggle sick like with a cold or an infection or something that can then spark up a flare up and you're even worse they're all triggers if I overdo it when I'm doing housework or going out I know it will result in a flare up so I try to pace myself on things. I try to do a job, sit down, do something else, sit down. Or if I'm going out, you know, try and make sure that you rest before you go out and after you've come back. But it doesn't always go to plan. <laughs> or I take my wheelchair as well. So I might walk for a short distance and then sit in my wheelchair. If you do want to increase your activity, it needs to be done very slowly and with guidance really from your GP or pain management program because you can't just say right I'm going to go off and I'm going to extend this workout to an hour rather than 10 minutes you will be flawed <laughs> so definitely need guidance on that remember that the flare will pass and you'll be able to move again and be back to your pre-flare self but your body's just telling you that it needs time to recover from whatever has happened to it. So whether it be the weather, sleep, stress, whatever's happened that has put your body into a flare, it's just saying, come on, I need a bit of time here. And you've just got to look after it. Give yourself a hug. <laughs> Say, okay. <laughs> I know it sounds a bit odd, but you have got to look after your body. You have, I promise you, you have. So that's about it. That's all my notes. That's everything. I know I've got lots and lots of fibro sections that I need to film and do for you. So bear with me if I don't mention everything in one because there's so much to go through. Um, if you have any tips or advice on flare-ups and how you deal with it, pop it in the comments below and I'll 
for a ploy and hopefully people will read them and pick them up too or if you've got any questions about what I've said today then pop it in the comment box by all means um, so I hope you have got something out of this and I will see you all on Saturday for the weekly oh don't forget to subscribe <laughs> Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> and thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Because people keep forgetting to hit thumbs up. So just whack that thumbs up. Go on, whack it in there.